What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. I'm Eli from the YouTube channel Ignition Tube, and if you don't know, this is my 2000 Audi S4 with 183,000 miles on it that is completely bone stock, other than an excess power cat back that is welded on, which is why we're making the video today, and a set of Megan, Megan, McGann racing coilovers. I had a little bit of a moral dilemma, but we're gonna be modifying this car. We're gonna be doing a full exhaust, we're gonna be doing an AEM boost gauge and an AEM wide band gauge so that we can be prepared to tune the car, get rid of the rear O2s, get rid of the EGT sensors, get rid of all that stuff. We'll have no more check engine light on the dash because it's a bad EGT sensor. And it's all gonna be good. So my homie Brad over at German Elite Tuning is going to be tuning the car. Let me tell you, I've thought long and hard about this modification process because this has to be one of the cleanest, mostly unmolested B5s left. There's not many rolling around that are completely stock other than coilovers and a cat back. And I'm about to, uh, well, we're gonna make it not stock. Oh, that's a good one. You can hear the turbos. Part of me is like, man, I should just keep it stock, but I really wanna experience a V5 S4. And for me, experiencing B5 S4 is not just driving around a stock car because I think it has the most value. So, originally, I was gonna do the period correct thing and put the gauges here and here. However, I'm kind of a baby and I'm worried, even though I know the airbag opens out, I'm worried about messing up curtain airbag function and or having the airbag launch the gauges at my face. After the accident S4, I value airbags very much and so as a result, I've decided to put it here where it could potentially still block the airbag, but I got a, uh, I got a 3D printed uh, uh, vent mount off of eBay uh, from I Do 3D Prints. I'll give them a shout out. Product is not perfect. Uh, the wideband uh, uh, wide plug doesn't fit in it perfectly, so I had to modify a little bit. I'll show you that, but let's jump into it. First things first, I gotta figure out how the heck to get this thing out. Are you just gonna pop right out? Come on. Oh, okay. Well, that was easy enough. So am I gonna have to drill a hole? No one told me that. Oh, well, it broke, but that's good because now the thing will actually fit through, I think. It like broke halfway and then I had to tap out a little bit extra to get the, the thing through, but we can fit everything through there now. Not perfect, but good enough. All right, next step is taking this cover off. Cam and I, uh, we made progress. Cam got here, we were shooting the shit, and all of a sudden we're, we're here. So cover the ECU is off. Down there in the back, there's a hole. And if you take in here, you take the kick plate off, which I didn't know how to do. Cam taught me how to do it. You gotta pull two trim covers off there. If you take the kick plate off, you can see up there the hole. So we're just gonna run it down around all this absolute nonsense and, uh, and up here and, and into there. And that'll be that. And uh, I don't know why. I don't think anyone else on YouTube has covered that there's just a blank grommet here. Maybe that's just a 2001 or a 2000, 2000 thing. 2000 thing. I don't know, but this is literally just a... Of course, it doesn't pop out. It's literally a hole right there. Everyone's like poking holes in this or poking holes in... There's a hole. You just feed the stuff through. So that's where we're going to go, I guess. So we took the fuel pressure regulator line off to double check that it fits. Or that our boost T fits. We just gotta throw a hose clamp like, on yeah, there. The yeah, yeah. Hey, our brother. So we took that off to double check that it fits, uh, and it does. So now we can cut the line somewhere closer to the grommet, and uh, and send it. This is, I mean, honestly, just professional zip tie work here. So we got the boost T from the AEM gauge there, uh, the boost hose going off of it, and that will go through there. And then we have to put the wideband sensor through, actually, we gotta go that way. And it's gonna sit there until we get the wideband installed. Uh, and then we cut two notches in the plastic to the ECU. This guy slides through here like that. And then this guy will slide through this side like that. This is boost. Uh, it's connected down there, and then obviously it goes back into this T and everything else is inside the car. So from here on out, we're working inside the car. Other than when we do the exhaust, we'll get that guy squared away. This is a test to see if we get power to these. I think I have it wired right. Oh, okay. This is not gonna, this is not gonna work. 14.7, because it doesn't have a connection. Please tell me this also ha Yeah, baby. 
Does that need to be calibrated if it thinks it's at 1.3 right now? So you're sitting here, you're driving the car, you look over here, there's your gauges. Except the camera doesn't want to focus on them. There we go. There's your gauges. Nice. Let me show you the goods that we got in here. Oh baby. That is a trunk full of excess power. Now I couldn't be more hyped about Access Power helping us out in this video because Access Power is kind of the go-to name for budget B5 stuff. So this is actually the dual muffler exhaust, which I guess requires some modification. Fingers crossed we can make it work. Pound and I'll, I guess we'll have to, Pound got a new welder, it's somewhere. So we'll have to make that work, but uh, first steps first, we gotta get this thing jacked up in the air. We gotta cut this old exhaust off because the previous owner well, they welded it all together. The flex pipes are on their way out. There's a lot of stuff going wrong, so we're gonna do the whole thing fresh, ready for a big old tune, and then hopefully, eventually, if you see back there, there's a little intake manifold. It's, uh, it's prepared for a single turbo. So maybe down the road, we'll do a single turbo on this car, but for the time being, let's get this out and get squared away. Okay, so originally, I thought this was three inch all the way through, like I told you. This is actually three inch down pipes to two and a half inch cat back with two mufflers, so this is the twin two from Excess Power. I'm actually not upset about that. Originally I was like, three inch, I need all the flow, blah, 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 and all the commenters are gonna say that, but I'm kinda happy because this will just bolt up and we'll put a clamp on and that'll be that, and we don't have to do any welding. I was doing with taking the bolts off the heat shield and uh well that guy decided to get stuck everything else has come off so i cut a line in it thinking that i could put a flathead in it it's got too much resistance so i, I made a visit to harbor freight let's say and I, I got some backup these guys are off of amazon they're supposed to be extractors or whatever but if that doesn't work those an extension for the drill bit and then another extension in case it doesn't reach so Either this or that is solving my problem today, hopefully. All these drill bits completely smoked. And when I say smoked, I mean smoked. So we've made that much progress down in there. You can see that there is a hole. Actually, it's too bright. Okay, there we go. See that? You can see that there's a hole down in there. Major progress here. So all the O2s are disconnected. The uh, exhaust temperature sensor I just cut because we're going to delete that anyway. Uh, one exhaust bolt off and that is loose. I don't know what I'm doing on the driver's side, but we're making progress over here. Hi. Well, uh, it's another day. I moved the car because Zach's coming today to exhaust work. My boy Al is here with me and we've gotten one down pipe out. The process is absolutely mangle the heat shield. Hope that you can get all the bolts loose by hand, which this side we got, that side they're still really tight. Um, and then uh, Alex is now trying to get the heat shield all the way out. We might have to cut it more, Alex. Yeah. What are, what are the findings here, Al? So this is interesting, because anybody who knows Audi Volkswagen, especially the Audi 2.7 TT, will know that uh, these O2 sensors typically aren't the, uh, let's just say the longevity piece of the car. No, this is definitely not the longevity. So what's interesting here is, I don't know if you're gonna be able to focus, but if you can see here, this says 39.99. Hang on, let me see what I can do here. I'm focused, I can't see it, but anyway. So it says 39.99, and I assume that means the 39th it's gotta be week, week 39, of, yeah. of 1999. So let's just ignore that for a second. What's interesting is we got the cat out as well. For starters, the O2 sensor says the same exact thing. But if you look at the cat, it's very, very hard to see, but it actually says right here, 0999. So ninth week of 99 probably? No, that or either or ninth week or maybe September. September. Either way, 1999 cat, I cannot believe this is still going over after 180,000 miles. Cat. O2 sensor, no O2 sensor codes. Shout out to the homies at Bosch making O2 sensors last 23 years and 180,000 miles. This is a factory miles. freak. This, yeah, this really is. So um, we're gonna put, uh, here's what's happening. The bolts on that side of the downpipe, very stuck. So we said, let's go to this one. Let's see what we can do. We're gonna put the downpipe in, or at least this part of the downpipe. Why is it not focusing? We're gonna put this part of the downpipe in the car, and then we're gonna move on to I don't know what the heck we're gonna do over there. I don't know how we ended up getting them out. One of the downpipes is in and bolted. 
the other downpipe is not bolted and it won't go through the gap and I gave up for the night but man it makes sense why nobody has really filmed the process of uh, downpipe extraction let's say that is a long long process and it's a challenge that's that's a straight up difficult challenging process so never done an exhaust install before I would not recommend taking on B5S4 downpipes as your first uh, first exhaust job. Pound's here now. We're having lots of fun. So the exhaust is too long. The downpipes are too long and the cat back is too long. So they're overlapping by like an inch. Then this connector doesn't fit over that part. So we're gonna weld it to there and then slide it over the front. It's, it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> it's gonna be really interesting. We're, yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're on a journey here, but I have to cut there, I have to cut there, and I have to cut there. And hopefully this all works out. And if it doesn't, then we're gonna go see Billy with an open downpipe car <laughs> and Billy's gonna fix it. Let's see what happens. Here's the deal, that side's pretty much dead on. The driver's side may take some finagling, we'll see. Yeah, here, I'll show you. So this side is pretty spot on. <laughs> Line up perfectly like that. So we'll weld that together like that. Yeah, but then this one, it's almost like it, it needs a bend in in this specific connection. Because it, it, it won't. All right, what has been an absolute multi-day journey, actually multi-week journey, is finally, fingers crossed, coming to a close, assuming the tune flash goes well and the car starts. Engine bay is back together. I don't have the plastics on it right now. I need to do that. But we have the excess power diverter valves, which you saw us install in a previous video. These are true diverter valves. These aren't splitters. They're just factory replacements. Down underneath the car, pow and work some magic, let me tell you. I spent way too much time under this car recently. Uh, those four bolts, not fun to get. You have to get the three bottom ones from the bottom after taking the axle heat shield off, uh, and then one on the top you have to work witchcraft for. Alex and I spent a long time, and I mean a long time, with the Dremel. So long that it actually overheated and broke, and now uh, it only works if you plug the battery into it. But back here is where Pound really works some magic. So uh, if you guys don't know, Pound's a homie. Pound's rescued me about six bazillion times. Uh, and basically our issue was, this adapter from three inch to two and a quarter uh, was too long. So we cut some pipe there, we cut some pipe here, and Pound ended up welding it on back here. Uh, and then up front we used the clamp because it fit on the front. Here, if you can tell, we bent that. That's why I was doing all that grinding is uh, because, well, we needed to bend it so that it would fit. And uh, they're not the prettiest welds in the world. It was, in Pound's defense, it was 11.30 at night and he's using a brand new flux core welder that he's never used it before. We're not MIG or TIG in here because we don't have 220. Um, but everything is connected otherwise. And then we got the, the uh, twin two set up out back, two mufflers. Fingers crossed, once I tighten these clamps, I can get out from under here. We can flash the German Elite Tuning Tune. And then we can start it. All right, well, we can no longer say that the car is untuned or flashing right now. It's so sick to have both these gauges working. So Brad has two files. Uh, the default file is the PBF file, which I thought it stood for peanut butter fluff. Uh, it actually stands for pops, bangs, and flames. Um, so if you're into that stuff, there's a file for that. Uh, I asked him for no flames, no pops, no bangs. It'll still have two-step launch control. It'll still have no lift shift. I feel bad modifying this car, but at the same time, I am so excited to drive it. All right, here we go. First start with the tune in it. You can hear the turbos. Oh, this is sick. Oh, it's way faster. It was so good stock, but this is so fun. Now we're gonna start having issues now that it's not stock. I know we're gonna run into other things, but. Oh, it's so much better. All right, update. Uh, I hit it in third gear on the way back to the house and the clutch slipped. So Brad sent me, so Mr. Brad sent me a stage 1.5 tune, which should keep all the fun features, the launch control and stuff, 
which obviously you can't do on stock catalytic converters, but I believe it turns down the boost and the torque delivery a little bit. All right, we're gonna try two step. Part of the German Elite tuning instead of 4200. I flashed that lower boost tune and the clutch is grabbing for the most part above 4,000 RPM. So Brad said no lift shift is active above 5,500. I'm gonna do the clutch anyway. I think we should try it, right? <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but it went into third. Kind of sounded like it just revved itself up even further. Maybe it's not on on this tune, I don't know. We're doing a two-step test. be happier with how the exhaust sounds it's quiet the tone is great it's not too raspy a lot of b5s4s get really raspy um, it makes good noises I do wish part of me wishes that it was a little bit louder but I've ruined so many cars by making the exhaust too loud that I'm actually not upset with the volume that this car has I really love where the gauges are mounted I like that they're not mounted here and I like that they're not mounted in the vents I think that looks a little bit trashy. I like the idea of them sitting up here. Now the vent mount does not look the best from outside of the car, but from inside of the car, they really couldn't be in a more perfect spot. And then finally, again, my homie Brad over at German Elite Tuning hooked it up, uh, took care of the car. If you need a B5 S4 tuned, or actually if you have a Mark VI or a Mark VII and you want to shoot giant fireballs, uh, Brad has you covered. He's got some pretty cool tunes there. So uh, that's all I got. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this longer form video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go out there and spread some positivity. And I will slip my clutch in the next video.